And coming off of that monster win, G-Man against Virginia, the number eight team in the nation at the time, and that was on Saturday. Yeah, big, they're obviously their biggest in-state rival and biggest rival in the, in the conference. They just got the sense in Jeff Capel's voice that he had to do something to shake things up. And, uh, you know, some guys don't react to coming off the bench well. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Very kind bounce. Lobali starts our scoring early in this first half for the Panthers. Cone. Hey, you know, that, that may be a sign. Pointer for Cone, who in last year's meeting, a victory for Virginia Tech between the teams, made four three-point baskets. Well, speaking of four, he's four of his last 23 coming into this game. He brought it to our attention right away, though. He, he knew that that was certainly a possibility with his team. And, and for Mike Young's part, He's worried about that big win against Virginia as a Luma scores. Yeah, Johnson had five points and one board and went two of five from the floor against Notre Dame. A Luma puts it on the deck, drives and scores. And he got clipped and he's going to the free throw line. There's the look, you see the run through and then he just fakes the handoff and there's nobody underneath to give him any help. Four personal fouls on the Hokies. And we mentioned they had only committed eight against Virginia. Horton misses. Champagne cleans it up. Champagne with 19 points, 11 rebounds, seventh double double against Notre Dame in the losing effort, and that will be an easy layup. Audie's oh, Tony puts it in for the Panthers. So after making his first shot and banking it in from straight away, he's missed his last two, and now Johnson. There's your first three for the Panthers. You know, he, he does not have that type of range, so uh, you've got that element that you have to guard him out there. 19th made three of the season for Xavier Johnson. That's Mutz leaving Champetti in his wake. A little mix up in that starting lineup. A little wrinkle for Coach Capel, but that's Mutz again, Mike. Mutz averages about seven and a half points per game. Scored four and had eight boards in the win against Virginia on Saturday, and that is all that. Hey, Xavier Johnson. That's the role that Jalen Cohn has played for the vast majority of the season. Tyrese Radford suspended from the program for now, and that's why Cohn has been in the starting lineup. And that is Mutz again up on the rim. They shot 61% in the second half, although Mutz did miss that one. They were up over 60% shooting against Virginia. There's Johnson again forcing his way. Bill Covington Jr., Pat Driscoll, Jeffrey Anderson are officiating crew for this evening in Pittsburgh. Cohn leaping from behind the line, and he gets the three. You don't. You never not shoot your way out of a slump. You shoot your way out of it. And uh, he's off to a good start here so far. Cohn was two of six from three-point real estate. The win against Virginia. That's a tough angle. And a basket for Horton. Nice little pass by Johnson, recovering defensively a Luma. Great recovery chase down from behind. The watch down is Pitt is doubling off of Beatty. Yeah, they're going to go at a Luma. They're going to double team off of him. A Luma rattles home the three. Transfer from Wofford to the redshirt junior. He only took one three his first two years. And he's become a three-point shooter this year, which is at that position something you have to have. Panthers come back with a three. Closely contested in our first half. This is Cone. He's open for three. Money from Cone. Short memory for Jalen yeah. Cone, who went two of six. Three pointers against Virginia, Mike. You've got to have that shooter's amnesia. Great take off the dribble. He might not come out again. Entry pass, Aluma, quick double, doesn't stop him. So nimble with the basketball, Mike. Had originally signed with Wofford once Coach Young got the job and left Spartanburg, South Carolina. To go to Blacksburg, he went with him. That's a three, Horton. So straight away with that three, Horton, the leading three-point shooter for the Panthers. Third year for Coach Capel. Great passing inside, and Mutz will go on a rim bender. Great high-low action that time by the Hokies. Couture got it back from Mutz. Loops it in, Aluma slightly off balance. Follow Mutz. before the horn, and it's Mutz. That's exactly what they shoot for their season average, 42%. 14th in the ACC, deep into the shot clock. 
trying to take it all the way. Collapsing defense on Luma and his teammates. And they stopped working on the drive. In fact, the rest of the team went 0 for 9. And now 0 for 10. Aluma over the top, took it away, and score it. One on five inside, and he gets the offensive glass. They're going to challenge him. You notice they went underneath those screens outside. They want him to be a jump shooter and not let him penetrate inside. Aluma loops it down to Mutz. All in one motion. Calculates the angle off the square. Terrific passer up on the high post. And those two have been really tough to handle for Pitt. Three from the corner. Hold that finish is Horton for three. Against Notre Dame in a losing effort on Saturday for Pitt. All of his field goal attempts were threes. Couture breaking loose underneath. He's making great decisions from the high post. First points of the evening for Couture. Trying to defend Horton who shoots it right over top of him for another three. Relatively clean game as well. Just nine combined free throws from the teams so far. Aluma, range extender. Got to respect that three-point shot. And he's got four assists, too, so a, a passer when they double. Aline scored the basket off balance and foul with two seconds on the shot clock. Mutz unable to spin that one off the glass. Johnson goes for a crossover and lay-in. Made it look easy, flying through the lane. Shot just... 31% from three-point distance, and that lost to Notre Dame. They'll work it inside, and Johnson. Just, he took, he lost concentration. He was trying to grab it with one hand, looking to see what the play was, and never got control of the ball. Seven turnovers in the game for Pitt now. Couture all the way to the rim. Even the rebounding is pretty close, Mike. A one-rebound advantage for the Panthers. Off the glass head, good. Johnson turning up the energy and 20 points. And they shot 31% as a team against the Irish for Pitt. Aluma fenced in. Double and triple team. Over the front rim and good. There were some Pitt defenders in the vicinity, but not fast enough to get to Aluma. Basket and foul. Over halfway through in this second half, and the shot clock is down to seven. Nifty dribble the lead. Couture is open in the corner. Let's it fly and spins it in. That's a clockwise swirl. Down the net for three. Off the inbounds. And Couture just got caught looking. He wasn't sure the ball was handed to the inbounder. And that was just an easy lob. I mean, look at, look at Johnson. He's basically playing center field off the beat. He's just clogging things up. No respect for the shot. Luma, you got to respect that three. Yeah. Nice look. We're shooting Mike. They only shoot 66% as a team. Not tonight. It's keeping them in the game in a two-point lead. And Virginia Tech has yet to go to the line this half. Horton with a three. This game has been very close the whole time, and then Pitt stretching out to eight points. You want to try to come down and get a possession that counts. Tony fighting for the loose ball, lays it up and in. Good to see that he is okay. And play continues, and the Panthers ripping the ropes with a three. On East Tony into double digits with 12. And it's, you know, Virginia Tech having to stay at home on the perimeter, and that allowed Champagny to work all by himself, one-on-one. -on -one. So 10 points, 12 boards. Champagny with a double-double, his eighth of the season. Started the night tied for the lead in that category in the ACC. Three-pointer, Aluma. And you mentioned this earlier as Pitt brings it up the court, and that one will fall. No foul called on the play, but a good, strong finish. Because we were tied at 31 at halftime. So I, I wonder, Mike, how Mike Young might evaluate this response as Couture knocks down the three. They had a lot of success against this pit team in the last time on the court for the Panthers. Tonight is a completely different story. Didi. Aluma. 
score the bucket and to the line, 11.4 on the clock. Virginia Tech will wave the white flag. Huge bounce back win for Pitt. 83-72 is the final count.